So if you didn't know, the number one international prospect signed with the Chicago White Sox. The White Sox are just doing everything right right now. And they signed the half-brother of Yoenis Cespedes in Yolki Cespedes. The guy's got a good bat. He's got a crazy arm. It looks like a little mini Yoenis Cespedes. So, I mean, the White Sox are really, really throwing their name out there and being like, we mean business. We're trying to win. And we're trying to win fast. So... I think he's 23 or 22 in real life, so he's only a year or two away from being, you know, MLB ready, and I'm excited to see what he can do in MLB The Show. So we're going to throw him into the lineup day one and see how it goes. So I hope you do enjoy the rebuild. If you do, thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoy the content. And of course, get in the comments section. Let me know if you followed any of these international signings that just happened. Let me know if you're excited for any of the players that just signed. The Cubs apparently signed a mini A-Rod, so I'm excited about that one. Super young, so obviously quite a few years away from being MLB ready. But it's always exciting to see these new talents come up and join these teams. So if you didn't know, I do have a second channel. So if you're looking for some other stuff outside of MLB The Show, there may even be some appearances from some of your favorite YouTubers on there. You should go check it out. I'll put a link to it in the top corner. It is the Ants Ortiz 2. We're playing other games. We're doing some other stuff. Just it, some, just a little bit different from some baseball content. Just so if you guys you know, need something a little bit different, go check it out. So exclusive negotiations, I didn't sign anybody back. So no column A, C check. I released Rodon. I released Mazzara because that's what the White Sox did. Basically, I didn't bring anybody back yet. I'm looking at arbitration and contracts. I'm going to bring everybody back. It doesn't really matter. I have a feeling that like these are players that I want. Not Mazzara, not Rodon. I did release them. I don't even think it's going to let me. Yeah, I can't even offer them arbitration. Jace Fry is obviously, like, always a player I want to get rid of. He just doesn't ever do well in franchise contracts i'm definitely going to give everybody a contract so when we take a look at this i definitely want to find someone that slots right into this spot in the rotation i definitely want to strengthen up the bullpen a little bit and then when you take a look at the lineup i feel like we have all our answers this is going to be yolki cespedes we don't have to worry about it so we're good to go there we could even put eloy at the dh which makes a little bit more sense so we have a little bit of money to spend Probably not going to go out and get any big name player like Trevor Bauer or anything like that. But if we can get, I don't really want to use Kopech. He just doesn't do well in franchise, sadly. That's just that's just how it is. So if I can find some sort of trade or some way to strengthen up the, the bullpen and the starting rotation, I think that's where the White Sox need to strengthen in real life as well. Lance Lynn definitely helped them out, but I still feel like they're a piece away in the starting rotation and the bullpen to really be solid so offensively i think we're good i might add a couple bench bats but overall i feel like the team's pretty good who is this 29 years old so it's one of those computer generated players so okay so let's 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 figure something out let's see who we add you guys can see our draft picks here there it is and uh yeah i mean outside of that i feel like that kind of covers all the bases let's hop into the first season all right, so as we start the first season, the roster that I use for this or for the rebuilds that I always use, this is the username or the user ID, whatever it's called. Just search this one. This person stays up to date with every move. So that's that's who I've been using and just, just going along with it. So um, since you guys ask so much what roster I'm using, and I know I'm still going to get questions about what roster I'm using. Speaking of comments, speaking of comments, if I ever respond to you and it seems like I'm being mean to you, it is not me being mean to you. I will never be mean to you unless you say something stupid. And then it's not even being mean to you. It's just calling you out on your stupidity. And I'm just being honest about that. I never mean to be mean, harmful, harsh, anything like that. Most of the time I'm coming off as sarcastic. That is most of my answers. Unless you're like this guy, like if you're if you're this guy, then yeah, I'll probably say something mean to you and tell you to get the hell out of here. That's really about it. So we'll we'll leave it at that. So here we go. Here is our squad. Here are the moves that we made. Rick Porcello in the team. We've got Lance Lynn, obviously, Liam Hendricks as well. Um, but nothing too crazy. You know, Christian Walker was an addition, two-year deal at one and a half million, super cheap, good platoon bat for us. Jackie Bradley Jr. was brought in. One-year deal, $4 million to replace Lurie Garcia. That's who he replaced. So this is the team. 
starting rotation could, you know, maybe be a little bit better in the four and the five spot. We've got Dylan Cease here who might be a trade piece, might be a trade piece. I'm thinking he, he's probably going to be someone that we look to trade. And then I want to get rid of Jace Fry and then just move Jimmy Cordero where Jace Fry is and see if we can just get like a, a bat for Jace Fry because I'm not going to use him to be honest. And uh, looking at our team, I'm thinking... I don't really know what we need because I mean may, maybe like a like a, a good little bat to have once we lose Adam Eaton because realistically I'm probably realistically I'm, I might not keep Adam Eaton after this so who could we get instead Cole Calhoun's a goon but I'm gonna hold off on that one so what I'm thinking is let's go for someone like get Yoannis Cespedes in this squad get the brothers Get the brothers uh, together. Nah, let's not do that. Let's go for just someone that's kind of cheap. Someone that does pretty well. Usually, usually. And then if it doesn't go well, we let them walk. And uh, then we don't really have to worry about it. You know what I mean? So let's go. We can't even get Mitch. We can't even get Mitch. We've got Nicky Delmonico, who I probably won't even use. So let's go with that. Let's go with that. Yeah, you're probably thinking, why would you get Mitch? You know what? just get an extra bat in the team there's nothing wrong with having more offense you could always use more offense speaking of offense this is the lineup look at it it's beautiful yeah Yolki Saspidis is a 72 overall and I haven't shown you his stats but this is what we're working with the 23 year old is gonna be good I promise you that he's gonna be he's gonna be a little a sneaky bat in the lineup so yeah this is the team we're within budget that's a big thing and then when you look at us, we're ranked seventh. This is a good squad. This is a very, very good team. So I'm thinking next year we start to make a couple more changes depending on who we let walk. Do we keep Lance Lynn? Do we let him go? Adam Eaton, you know, a couple other players do leave. I did bring back Kalame for a year. You can see 2.8 million. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I'm thinking about trading one of the two catchers, Grandal or Collins we don't need both and like when you look at Grandal he's good but then he's not so if we can get away with Zach Collins putting up similar numbers to what Grandal is doing on a lot cheaper contract I'll probably ship Grandal somewhere and just try to get a better pitcher or better hitter and boost this team up a little bit more so let's get through this first season see you guys in a bit so we made the postseason as a wild card team, which I feel like is a little bit of an underperformance by the team. Just a little bit, you know, just just a small bit, especially when you finish 13 games behind its wins. Yeah, I feel like that's a that's a little bit of a disappointing season. We weren't even the first wild card team. That's just ugh, that's gross. That's so sad. What happened? I have a feeling like someone did really poorly pitching wise, like really poorly. And I have a feeling it's going to be Liam Hendricks. Um, or Liam Hen yeah, Liam Hendricks, Liam Hendrick. We'll, we'll check in a second, whatever his name is. So here we go. Let's see who it was. Liam Hendricks. I have a feeling it was him. Dylan Cease, you know what? He's going to get better. I have faith. Maybe we'll keep him in this long relief role. Garrett Crochet is nasty. You know, he's, he's going to put up good numbers. Kalame still put up good numbers, but it looks like this is probably the time to let him walk in free agency. You got Foster who... You know what? Not bad. Not bad. Jimmy Cordero was really solid. Aaron Bummer, really, really good. And Liam Hendricks. Okay. He actually did well. Normally, he lets me down a lot in franchise. So that was just my go-to. He's like my scapegoat. If I know someone did bad, I'm going to throw his name out there. So who did poorly with the... You know what? Pitching wasn't bad. Like, that is a good season. Like, I'm not, I'm not hating on, on that at all. Offensively, maybe offensively, we did a little bad. Christian Walker was decent. Seven home runs, 324 average. Okay. And uh, what else we got here? Okay, so maybe offensively we're uh, a little lacking after these two. Our, our first two in the lineup, not not fantastic. Jose Abreu, 33 home runs. We can work with that. Eloy had a good year, 40 home runs. 29 for Yon Moncada. We've got Robert hitting 28. Adam Eaton had a uh, like an ass uh, season. Yolki Cespedes not necessarily what you want grandal had a good year he heard that i wanted to remove him he was like no 
please keep me here we're gonna win a world series so um yeah i think that's it someone asked me why i don't pronounce mitch's last name i'm not trying to get canceled all right that's just i'm being honest i'm not i'm not trying to get canceled there like that's just it, I just have a feeling someone's gonna clip it and be like, "Hey, what are you, what are you doing? What are you saying?" So the Twins defeat the Padres in the World Series, and uh, yeah, let's keep moving forward. Now you guys know why I don't say the last name. Uh, this is an unfortunate last name. Robinson Cano retired, and here we go. Let's keep moving forward. Lance Lynn. You know what? Let's bring him back for at least another year. Thirteen mil is a lot of money, but I have faith. And. Ooh, I'm gonna let the rest walk. I'm gonna let the rest walk. I considered Adam Eaton just to have that that offensive outfielder, but you know what? We're we're gonna let him go. Uh, 40 man definitely gonna make sure Kopex part of it. Same thing with Hanson. Don't want to lose those two. Arbitration, everybody there, and then contracts. Everybody's gonna get a contract as well. So when we take a look at the lineup, ooh, so we could move Mitch to right or or. We just get a really good bat, which you know what I'd be I'd be down for, um, like an outfield bat, or we could let Eloy play left, move Yolki to right, get a really good DH bat. So we need a we need a starting pitcher, and then we need one bullpen arm. Do we have either of those available? Michael Kopech's not good in franchise. I like I wish he was. I know he's a really good prospect. He has a lot of hype around him. He just doesn't do well in franchise, sadly. So he's probably not going to feature. So. We could get the new Yankee Corey Kluber. We could get Andrew Heaney, Zach Davies, the new Cub. There's a couple. There's a couple like cheap names that we could go after to fill out that fourth spot in the rotation. Bullpen wise, we can get the new Philly, Archie Bradley, or a couple other names there, which again could help us out. Don't look too expensive. And then I said I wanted a really good bat. And hear me out. Brandon Belt broken in franchise. Throw him in the DH spot. We have a power hitting lefty that could really help out the lineup. Which, looking at the rest of the options available, Michael Conforto, I feel like I get him too often. Jorge Soler, I used to get him a lot. We could go after someone like Cole Calhoun, but I feel like I've gotten him recently too. Eddie Rosario. You know what? I feel like being a little different. What does Brandon Belt want? 10 mil? Let's let's do something like this. We'll bump this up a little bit. It's a little different. It's a little weird. But a 33-year-old DH, throw him in the lineup. Let's make it happen. I, I have faith in this one. So let's see how that goes. I'm gonna attack a couple pitchers, see what we can get, and I'll see you guys for season two. Alright, so second season. Let's take a look. Let's see how we did in the offseason. So obviously we brought in Mitch. We signed Corey Knable on a two-year deal, seven and a half million. Didn't have the best of years so far, but I, I have a feeling. I have a feeling this is going to be a, a good year for him. Zach Davies. Z Dave Wees? Zach? Zach Davies is brought in. Fantastic year last year. 242 ERA. Love to see it. I think I did a two-year deal. Yeah, two-year deal. Six and a half million each year. Cheap, cheap, cheap. I almost said steal, and then I wanted to say deal, and then I wanted to say cheap all together. Didn't know what was going to come out, so I had to pause for a second, made a weird face, and now it just looks bad. So, cheap deal, really good, and then obviously Brandon Belt was someone that I talked about. I have a feeling he's going to do really well, and if he doesn't do well this year, we'll let him walk in free agency since we did a club option. We all know I love myself a good two-year club option. So, this is the squad. I like it a lot. Like, this is a really good team. Um, bullpen was solid last year. Starting rotation was strong last year. And then when you look at the lineup, you know, I felt like we had a couple players underperform. But I definitely feel like this is this is a really good team. I mean, Yoelki Cespedes is growing pretty quickly. We've got Madrigal, who's still young. Robert's still young. Moncada's, what, 27, 28, 26, even better. So there we go. Eloy's young. Like, this is a good team with a lot of players hitting their prime. This is scary. So, again, we'll see how Yasmani does. If he does poorly... You know, he's only got one year left on his deal, so we'll probably try to trade him and just let Zach Collins take over, even though Zach Collins was pretty atrocious last year. We'll see how things go. We did bring back Jackie Bradley Jr. Felt like one year, four million, super cheap to do. Might as well do it. We have some money to work with in the budget. We're going to have to look at players like Keuchel, Jose Abreu, Lance Lynn once again. I think Giolito as well. Oh, no, Giolito's on arbitration, so we're set. Okay, we're good. 
we may have to spend a little bit of money but we have the money you know in the budget to make it work i feel like we're still a really strong team probably still sitting around the sixth spot which was what i was gonna say so so far so good hopefully we can actually win a postseason game this time maybe even win a world series all right, so we won 109 games. We only lost 53. We won the division, which is great. We're taking on the winner of the wild card. That's not great. We all know what that means. So taking a look around the league, we're ranked fifth now. And I, I feel like the stats for the team are basically the same as what we had last year. Maybe a little improvement here and there. But looking around the league, we were the best team on paper. You know, the most winning team in baseball. It looks like we have a couple league leaders. Davies, Giolito, and Hendricks. So no offensive leaders, though. Even though I feel like offensively, that's kind of the strong suit of this team. We got a gold glove, a Cy Young, and a delivery man of the year. Okay. Okay. I'll take that for sure. Giolito won Cy Young. Batting title went to Devers. feel like that's not a name we see often. And then rookie of the year went to Forrest Whitley and Seth Beer. Okay. Let's take a look at pitching now. Dylan Cease in this long relief role, I think is perfect. Like this fits it really well. Yes, love it. Garrett Crochet, potential went down, not too sure why, but still a really good season. Matt Foster, kind of the same as last year, a little bit worse. Corey Knebel, oh no. Uh-oh, oh no. Jimmy Cordero was good, Bummer was good, and Hendricks was good. So one, eh, one bad signing in Corey Knebel, but looking at the rest of the team, Everybody did well. Everybody did well. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Offensively, how do we do? Okay. Bench, bench, not bad. Bench, not bad. What we got? Tim Anderson back to being Tim Anderson. You got Yon Moncada putting up stupid numbers. Same with Abreu. Yes, the offense is back. I told you Brandon Belt was going to do well. It looks like he went down a little bit. Maybe a little bit, but I feel like that's still a pretty good season. You got Luis Robert putting up really good numbers. Madrigal, not a power guy. He's getting on base at a, a pretty good level. I'll, I'm pretty happy with that. Yolki Cespedes improved, but for some reason the potential went down. Don't understand that. And Grandal. Grand, Grandal did well, but like, I just don't know if it's worth $18 million. In real life, those numbers probably weren't $18 million for a catcher. You know, catching market's kind of tough. But we'll see how it goes. So we're taking on the Indians, and we are one and one, two and one, two and two. So we're gonna go to our, you know, the man Giolito. Hopefully he can get us the dub. Seven nothing. There we go. So here we are. Let's see how we do here. Hopefully, well. I feel like Giolito could go there, and then we'll go Davies, Ronaldo, Lopez. So. We lose the first and the second and the third. We just got swept by the angels. You know what happened? It was because you guys didn't like the video. If you didn't like the video yet, that's why we just lost. We didn't win a World Series because you didn't like the video. Un unbelievable. Unbelievable. So here we go. Tim Beckham retired. Oh, well. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the team here. I'm going to accept this option as well as this one. And then Tim Anderson, we definitely need to lock him up. We'll give him a player option. Backload that contract. <sighs> These are going to be expensive here. Um, I probably shouldn't have accepted Brandon Belt's contract. But you know what? I still have faith. Who do I want to keep? Both? Do I want to keep both? Do I want to let one walk and go for someone else? I, I don't know. I guess, you know what? We'll let Keiko walk, even though Keiko's been really good for us. We'll give Kopech a shot. We'll give Kopech a shot. I don't have faith in it at all, but we'll give him a shot. Tim Anderson didn't sign, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to up his offer, and then I'll I'll just bring back everybody. Like, we, we had a really good team. There's no point in changing it up. We'll bump up the offer a little bit. We'll even make it like 16 mil. We'll leave it there. And then 40 man, if any of those guys go, oh no, I won't, oh, like, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. We'll offer everybody arbitration. We're going to offer everybody a contract. Budget wise, ooh, we could actually go out and sign somebody. So this is supposed to be Tim Anderson. That'll be fine. We'll get him back. But pitching wise, Kopech here, bullpen, we could trade Knable since he was kind of garbage. Or is there someone available? I guess Tim Anderson's contract hasn't come into play yet, so we can't really go out and sign anybody big. 
So it might just be a trade, you know, Corey Knebel for somebody like a bullpen arm just to really solidify that bullpen. And then I'm looking at these other options. You know, we could go out and get like Trey Turner or anything like somebody like that. But then we really couldn't go out and afford Tim Anderson. So I think I'm going to stick with Tim Anderson and I think we'll just make a trade next season. Alrighty, final season time. We're just going to trade straight up Knebel for Edubre Ramos of the Cubs. Boom. There we go. And I think that might be it, to be honest. Uh, I'm trying to think what else could we do? Maybe trade Matt Foster. That would really be it. Uh, yeah, I mean, because like when you look at the team, everything else has been pretty good. You know, the catching spot has been, you know, something that I've like kind of hinted at that I might trade. But like he's still putting up really good numbers for a catcher and like. There's no point in getting rid of him when, like, I'm just going to trade for someone that's going to give me really similar numbers. And, I mean, the team looks really solid. Yeah, we do have some older players like Abreu and Belt. You know, Grandal's like, what, 34 now? So, he actually, he he might fall off. So, he, he might be someone that we actually do need to trade just to get someone a little bit better. Who, though would be could i get will smith okay so budget is a problem who who do you want to get rid of that could help like just make this a deal that would work it looks like i'd have to take one of the relievers i mean i don't hate the idea so like maybe like, who could i give them here um Let's see, let's see, let's see. I don't really want to get rid of Andrew Vaughn. Like, one of these... Okay, one of those catchers works. And then what about, like, him? That works? Okay, so we get a new reliever as well. Okay. We might we might have actually just improved the team a little bit more. So who gets sent down? Matt Foster? Sadly. But he has, he has struggled a little bit. So, I mean, like, it's not like it's the worst... Worst scenario. We get Will Smith not not the fresh prince but you know will smith and i'm i'm not i'm not upset with that move i'm not upset with that move at all so yeah let me add will smith to the catching spot um ronnie rodriguez was a rule five pick uh just to get an extra player because if we didn't bring back jbj we had a spot open other than that everything else is the exact same i feel like this has been a a pretty successful rebuild so far and yeah let's see how it goes can we please win a world series that would be so nice let's see how it finishes so another 100 win season but we're a wild card team wow okay the in all oh, by a game are you kidding me a game we are the third ranked team in baseball but a game wow okay that's wild that's that is quite quite an unfortunate situation so let's go see mount castle with the rays interesting trevor bauer with the the cubs you got burrios and shane bieber with the indians oh okay so maybe the indians have just gone crazy on the pitching and that's what's uh making them really good so all right let's see how the team did michael kopak was wasn't terrible you know what not too bad in this long relief role Garrett Crochet was absolutely nasty. He's so good in franchise. Edubre Ramos was terrible. Great. You love to see it. Jimmy Cordero was good. Tommy Canely, solid. Aaron Bummer, not great. Was a huge bummer. And uh, Liam Hendricks, lights out. This entire rebuild has been outstanding. I didn't even realize he had 57 saves last year. But wow, was like insane. What about the rest of the pitching staff? You know what? So far, so good. I'm, I'm happy with that. For once, like, our starting rotation was really, really good. The bullpen, there were a couple hiccups here and there, but nothing too crazy. Our bench, Mitch was pretty good. 75 at-bats, 21 hits. I'll definitely take that. Danny Mendick was pretty good as well. 14 home runs. Excuse me? Jeez. Okay. Tim Anderson, back to being really good. You know, 30 home runs. Yon Moncada, there we go. Love to see it. Jose Abreu still putting up great numbers. You've got Eloy Jimenez with almost 50 home runs. Uh, Brandon Belt still sitting around 30 home runs. Love it. Luis Robert is continuing to improve. Nick Madrigal, it just looks like this is where he's kind of sitting. 
for like hitting ability. Yolki Cespedes, ooh, I love seeing that. 25 home runs. I mean, he's he's gonna be good. He's gonna be really good. You got Will Smith who was putting up similar numbers of what Grandal was doing. And then back to the top of the lineup. I like it. The team's looking pretty solid. So here we go. Playoff game. Boom. We win. Perfect. Love to see it. And here we go. Let's go like. Let's go like that. So we get Giolito at game three against the Rays. And we needed that win. We get the win there. Dylan Cease. Or do I want Lance Lynn? Zach Davies has 135 ERA. He only got one out. Excuse me. Boom. We lose. Excuse me. What? One out? Huh? Uh, gross. 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 We lost. We're eliminated. It's super disappointing. And that's just how it's going to end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoy the content. And of course, get in the comment section. Right, like, let me know. Did you guys look into the international signings at all? Are you excited about any of the players that did sign? This was a little bit different. We decided to throw in Yolki's Hespedes, see how it went. And like I said, I hope you guys did enjoy it. Remember to check out the second channel. And that's really about it, guys. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.